one. Hello from a very late night in Bridgestone Arena where I am sitting with Jack Pilgrim, my usual rapid reaction friend. And in for Zach Gagan, we have the Nashville resident, Miss Tyler Thompson. We're very excited to have her, but we're not excited about anything else because Kentucky lost to Vanderbilt on Friday of the SEC tournament. In the quarterfinals, a week after losing to them on senior night in Lexington, Jerry Stackhouse did it to Calipari again with the exact same recipe, basically the same game. We have the same complaints. He ran it back and beat Cal, and now we're all going home from Nashville tomorrow, way before we Not want me. to, as Kentucky disappoints us again. Jack Pilgrim, Kentucky now one and four in their last five SEC tournament games. Um, health was a little bit of an issue, but I don't think anybody wants to hear about health right now. Kentucky just got beat by Vandy again. Yeah, another middle eight failure. It's what lost the game for Kentucky at Rupp Arena on senior night. All of the con you know complaints that we had about their inability to get defensive stops, to make shots uh, when, when it mattered most. Uh, those are the two most crucial segments of the game, the last four minutes of the first half and the first four of the second because it sets the tone. It's the momentum shifter. It's where you go into the locker room excited and confident and happy, and um, that's exactly where things went south for Kentucky on senior night. And then, again, once again, almost – to the exact point numbers. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. Just the, the script was uh, almost identical. Uh, set the tone for the last four-ish minutes where missed free throws were a huge concern. Uh, just a team where the guards were better for Vanderbilt. No defensive stops, and Kentucky couldn't make the shots when it mattered most. Nine and 16 at the free throw line oh. in the second half. I hate seeing those two numbers together again. Tyler, it looked good, as Jack was saying, early. Felt great, and then just you snap your fingers and Vandy gets momentum, and Vandy really was the better team. It wasn't a fluke win. Vandy deserved to win this game. And it's just being in, we're in such a weird spot that Vanderbilt has beat us. Uh, the football game was pretty wow. significant. Senior night a week ago, and now knocking us out of the SEC tournament. I mean, you live here. Just how does this feel at being Vanderbilt? It, it's weird. I mean, I have friends who are Vanderbilt fans, and I think they don't even know how to react to this. Like, I texted a few and congratulated them, and they're like, yeah, this is pretty strange. Um, so they're not even getting chesty, which is strange. It's just it's just a bummer. Like, I don't think anybody, you know, didn't expect something like this. Like, I think any outcome would have been, you know, not surprising. Like, if you had told me tonight or this morning that Kentucky would lose to Vanderbilt, I wouldn't have been shocked. But at the same time, like, I'm still really bummed because this night started out so fun. Today was so fun. Last night was so fun. Like, this place was full of Kentucky fans, and they were loud, and it was awesome. And just the way Kentucky lost was such a disappointment. And, like, that's not what you want going into the NCAA tournament. Like, how much faith do you have that this team can pull off another improbable, you know, rebound, bounce-back performance? I didn't expect this team to win this tournament. I definitely expect them to win this game. But as Tyler's saying, this crowd was so good. I've been to a lot of these – I, for a Friday night, I don't know that I've seen many where not just Kentucky fans, really everyone. Wednesday night was crazy, but Kentucky brought it tonight against Vanderbilt, and the fans just deserve better. Broadway's going to be awkward tomorrow if anyone even sticks around. I mean, people just got in town. People didn't even unpack yet, and it's now time to go home again, Jack. I, I didn't even get to wear my fancy jacket that I showed off on that rapid reaction that one night. I think it was the Kansas <laughs> game. I, I didn't even get to go out on the town with it, so I, that, that's just disappointing. And it was – Interesting being in the locker room, the mixed bag of emotions because there were some players angry, the coaches were angry, some were sad. Jacob Toppin was kind of like, you know what, it is what it is. We got plenty of basketball left to play. John Calipari's press conference was very bizarre, still talking about how much time they have left and um, they just got to get healthy. It just feels like it's the same storylines and the same quotes Groundhog that we're hearing day. over and over again. It's just a really, really weird time to – feel confident that's kind of the tone of this team right now is um, you know we just got to stack solid performances on top of each other there's still time left to, to go and I just don't know where that time is coming from there's they're now one game away from being sent home for like permanently we don't want to break down a lot about this game because it doesn't matter it's behind us we're going home it is what it is the tournament's next week selection Sundays in two days but there is one part from Nashville I think we need to address and Jack Pilgrim you are our source on the scene uh, everyone watching at home, Tyler and I went to John Calipari's press conference while Jack went to interview players, pretty standard procedure. Cal mentioned that Jacob Toppin did not practice. We were a little confused because that's the first we've heard that. You spoke to Jacob Toppin and there seems to be some miscommunication, some misunderstanding, and maybe just not an injury at all. 
Jacob acted like he didn't know what we were talking about is what we're getting at. I, I, I said, so what's your ailment, Jacob? And he said, well, what's an ailment? And I was like, well, your, your injury. And he said, well, I'm not hurt I, or I'm not injured. I'm fine. So, uh, there's no big deal. I was like, am I interviewing the right person? <laughs> did, did, did Cal not say before this game that Jacob has missed all week of practice and that was a setback. We've been focused on Kaysen and CJ and Savir and Jacob was the guy that was kind of hurt the whole time and is Jacob not hurt at all? Am I talking to the wrong person? Is Are you even Jacob Toppin? Am, am I, where am I? What, what locker room am I in? So yeah, I, I have no Is Jacob hurt? I have no idea. Is he going to be back next week? I have no idea. It's It just stinks because we're not even from a reporter, you know, trying to get the story out standpoint. Just being a fan you want to get excited about your team and you want to know that some guys are available and when coach is saying he's injured and the players are like, what are you talking about? I'm not injured. I just I just want to know what team I'm going to see on Thursday of next week. Yeah, I, I mean, I think none of us have any idea what to expect, but the tone from tonight, just I, I can't get excited about it, which stinks because I was so excited We're coming so into funny. this. I know. We were running around on Broadway. So it doesn't matter for the seating. It's so yeah. this is a scenario none of us really planned for. Yeah. It probably, I mean, uh, any shot of a five or climbing up any higher seems to be out the window. Really, I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak for you all. For me, it's the seed doesn't matter, location doesn't matter. Just get this damn team healthy and playing good basketball. Because if they're playing their best, I don't care who the opponent is, they'll they'll beat some good teams. Uh, maybe not a one seed, but they'll win some games and turn everything figured out. But right now, it's just we don't even know what team's going to show up. Yeah, and the narrative right now is this is when Kentucky has been at their best, when they have had their backs against the wall, when they have lost stupid games, when they have, have performed in ways that are just inexplicable at times. This is when they have returned to kind of go middle, finger, middle fingers in the air and say, all right, you guys doubted us, let's do it. They might win in the opening round. They might make a statement in the first couple of games, but how much can you rely on a team that is so inconsistent? And, and once they do kind of build that momentum back, they kind of rip that rug right back from underneath you. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you can you can sit here and say there there are six wins on the table coming up for this team when when they can't string together three solid wins back to back to back. This isn't know. fun. This is not fun. <laughs> We're just sitting here. Great. It's like what is it? Midnight here. What do, why are we still here talking about this basketball? We lost to Vanderbilt. YouTube viewers, thank you for watching us. Subscribe, comment, leave your complaints. Free throws seem to be, be the biggest complaint. We'll all figure out injuries together. I'm glad you got to see Tyler. It's good being in Nashville with you, Tyler. I even wanted to do a all... fun rapid reaction. Dang it. Maybe next week, maybe. Well, let's go ahead and get your NCAA tournament prediction. Obviously, <laughs> we don't know the seed. We don't know the opponent, but let's get some enthusiasm going. We went the whole you damn want thing. some enthusiasm? Yep, we're oh, the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. Well, this is our enthusiasm. So we're going <laughs> to sign off from Nashville, where Kentucky plays no more games after Friday because they lost to Vanderbilt for the second time in like a week. And we're sad. Thank you for watching. This is Jack. This is Tyler. I'm Drew. We'll see you at March Madness. It's a week away, the big one. Hopefully they win a game. It is. It's, there it is. There it is. Let's go. It only took.